an angle mode. Arming. Very low vibration. Like, it sounds like a plane flying by. And it kind of changes a little, which I think is very bad because uh, that means that something is like coming loose or vibrating more or something. So that was a very short flight. These motors are freaking hot, which makes sense that, oh, oh, oh. Oh, dang, brother. Okay, so, oh, wow, I'm smelling it now. Shoot, this wasn't happening. Um, last night. Well, maybe it was, but and now I realize one of the reasons why the motors are uh, wobbly is because the print is uh, melting. So the whole thing is melting. I see that now. You see how that motor clip is rubbing right against the, uh, the 3D print. The hole is not large enough. That would explain why the sound is changing. Hey, so I've been working on this, uh, what this essentially is, is a four inch sub 250 drone frame, well, and drone design. The frame is what I'm working on right now. Cause what I envision is a, basically a do everything uh, FPV drone. So it is big enough to carry a GoPro, but when it's stripped down and you have a, like a smaller battery and you take uh, the GoPro and everything off of there, uh, it would be sub 250 so that you could fly over people and it would be safer or meet requirements in different situations. Um, so uh, the requirements for flying over people, um, unless they've changed, which le let, let us know in the comments if they've been updated, uh, but it's going to be that the propellers need to be guarded, it needs to be sub 250, and it needs to have remote ID. So really pretty basic, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but in any case, what I'm looking at right now is uh, the frame. So what I'm trying to do is get just the lightest frame possible. This is 3D printed in a uh, bamboo lab carbon fiber PLA. Um, and I've gone through several different versions. Um, this one has, I believe these are 30 millimeter standoffs, uh, which I would probably take down in the final version to get them as, as small as possible. But for right now, I just want to have some more room to work. Um, and the electronics are from the Synalog, uh, 35 V1 or yeah, Synalog 35 V1. So, which used to have this as the main frame, which is actually super heavy and this, and then the propeller guards, which are also super heavy. So these come to, I think like 109 grams, uh, over hundred grams. Uh, my frame, uh, as it is right now, comes to about 60 grams. So I'm really trying to keep it, like I was hoping to go like under 50, but I'm not even sure if that's like possible. Um, Cause I think this, this carbon fiber PLA is lighter than carbon fiber. However, of course it's not actual carbon fiber, um, which is unfortunate, but um, I wanna at least, I mean, first of all, it'd be cool to have a 3D printable frame so then you guys and anybody could just like 3D print it um, and it'd be cheap to manufacture a bunch of them and all that stuff. But um, eventually I would want to turn it into carbon fiber, but I kind of want to see like what, you know, what's going to work first. So the tricky thing about that though is that carbon fiber is going to be a lot stronger, um, uh, especially like on the arms than, uh, uh, you know, 3D printed material um, and especially for the weight. So, um, in any case, the issue that I'm running into right now is, um, I guess I didn't make this hole, uh, large enough for the, uh, the motor clip, the C clip, uh, that holds the motor shaft in place. Um, I didn't make that large enough, like, so that there, so that the clip would not hit the 3d print like there. You, I think you can, oh, I think you can see right there. It's kind of dragging. See down in that hole. It's kind of 
it's, it's hitting the print. So what was happening is it was melting the 3D print, which is not helpful because I noticed that uh, I noticed some of the some of the arms were kind of crooked, you know, kind of warped. And I was like, that's kind of like that, like that one. I was like, that's kind of weird because, um, you know, it printed really nicely, nice and flat. Um, and uh, so that's that's why. So we were getting these really weird vibrations, low vibrations. So anyway, that's just to say, hey, this is a cool thing I'm working on. And also, um, what do you think, uh, you know, could make this better? Or, or what would be a good way of like structurally improving it or maybe changing the structure um, so that, you know, we're like keeping the same weight, but we get it stronger or maybe just add as little weight as possible. Right now, what I'm thinking is... Um, extending this uh, middle portion. So the middle portion, we have kind of this um, U channel, this U shaped channel, um, which that, that part is, you know, quite strong, um, but it tapers down towards the end. And then it's just this one piece right here. And look at that motor. That's kind of, I'm not sure if you can see it there, but it's like, that's really wonky. Um, also, I should have had all four motor screws in here, but anyway, so I'm thinking the next improvement would be to make this U channel just go all the way out to the edge of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, what do you call this part? The guard, I guess. Um, which these parts are actually quite strong, like for how thin the, uh, material is once they're, uh, you know, kind of stacked on top of each other and screwed down. Um, it's actually really pretty freaking dang strong. And these, all the standoffs are 3d printed as well in the same, um, carbon fiber PLA material. So anyway, sorry. Uh, so U channel all the way down and then probably at 90 degree angles to the U channel, um, add, I don't know, some kind of, some kind of supports, maybe small U channels or something, um, uh, to, you know, to support the motor and to, to keep it from wiggling back and forth. Cause I can see now, and maybe this is cause, cause it already like got hot and melted. But I can see now that like, you know, that's that twisting motion is going to be the biggest or uh, probably the biggest issue with that. And the motor's, you know, going to want to twist back and forth and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, that's the best thing I can think of. The, uh, the FPV part needs to be, um, improved. Um, it's cause the, the mount right here, like I didn't, I didn't leave like enough, um, room and enough material and stuff things kind of look things look different in uh in cad when you're like right up close to it and and everything so uh plus these need to be printed in uh tpu is what i'm thinking um stuff like that uh but otherwise i think this portion would be okay the idea was that i could mount a gopro on the top right here um and i know that is kind of far out there uh compared to the the other, the, yeah, it's, it's really far out in front of the drone. Um, but I don't know if there's any better way of doing that without adding like a lot of weight or material. Uh, cause that's one of the things that I was like, that I thought was kind of crazy. Like, or even with the Cinelog 25, I'm sorry, 35 V1, this, this, uh, frame here, it is beefy, but honestly, this isn't too bad. The, the 35 V2 um, is even worse. It's a huge plate. You have these huge vibration dampers. Um, and it's just kind of crazy that because it's still running on the, on the, uh, three and a half inch, uh, propeller size, you know? Um, so that's just kind of bananas to me. Cause even if we're not trying to hit like sub 250, you know, to meet requirements or whatever, um, it is, uh, it's, it's still like, you know, you want like the lightest weight possible, but the thing is, I understand that manufacturers, you know, if I was a manufacturer, I wouldn't want to mass produce something that's like, you know, likely to break if you crash. Cause then I'm going to have to deal with a bunch of people returning the product or asking for support and all this stuff when I could have just made parts like, you know, a few grams heavier and then not had to deal with that. But right now what I'm trying to do is get like, you know, cutting edge performance 
uh, ma maxing out the performance and basically thinking, well, if I crash, I'll just have a backup, you know, or I'll just, I'll print a new frame or I'll just have, you know, just build a new one basically. So I'm focusing on the performance, not worrying about the durability. Although I think this would be pretty durable, but uh, for this type of stuff, primarily, uh, I know, well, it's a do all type of drone, but primarily, um, you know, it'd be for possibly indoor filming, filming around, you know, soft objects, um, stuff like that. Okay. I think that's it. I'm going to, I'm going to get back on the design program and figure something out. So, uh, let me know in the comments, uh, ideas, possible ideas for improvements, or actually if, if you know of like a super ultra light four inch, uh, frame that has propeller guards, uh, included, that's like sub, uh, sub 70 grams. Um, let me know, or even like sub 100, but really, really to make this work with like any kind of decent sized battery, I'm pretty sure it'd need to be like sub 70, because this is 60 grams right now. But anyway, yeah, let me know if such a thing exists, because yes, I would like to just, you know, I, I would like to say I have all the good ideas and nothing else exists. Um, and if somebody else already thought of it, I'm not interested, but that's not a very, um, that's not a very productive mindset now, is it? So, all right, thanks. Stay cool, stay flying, and I'll see you again very soon.